But keep it going right now for Ewan Woo. Yeah, I was watching the show the other day uh, about pigeons and stuff, and I learned that not only can you eat a pigeon, but we actually should be eating them. Yeah, before chickens, like, people all ate pigeons and stuff. And yeah, they're all just sitting there looking at us like, why aren't they eating us? Like, I don't know. Let's go crap on the car. <laughs> you know what the official, can the official candy of Pride Month is? Low box. <laughs> And you know, California is now number one in road rage in the whole nation. And finally, all my hard work is paying off. And you know, there's two dudes camping in the woods, right? And uh, one of them goes to piss in the bushes. And then this poisonous snake jumps out and bites him on the dick, right? And so he's like, runs to his buddy. He's like, oh crap, man, you know, this poisonous snake bit me on dick, dude. I'm gonna die and shit. He's like, dude, call 911 or something, right? So his buddy calls 911 and he tells him, he's like, oh yeah, my buddy got bit by snake poison, you know? He's like, all right, don't worry about it. You just gotta, what you gotta do is you gotta suck the poison out right away. He's like, well, what? He's like, well, what if I don't do that? He's like, then your friend's gonna die. And all of a sudden, his friend, his buddy grabs him. He's like, dude, what do you say? What do you say? He's like, sorry, man, you're gonna die. <laughs> yeah, you know, I meet a lot of hat patients doing comedy, and uh, I kind of don't like them, you know? <laughs> yeah, they all kind of act like they're better than people and stuff. You know, if they were foolish, and they would know that they're better than everybody. <laughs> Yeah, like Bruce Lee, you know, one of his quotes was that you can't change the world with your fists. No, you need a gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard the story that uh, of Adam and Eve and the apple is actually an allegory for oral sex. Yeah, you know, she, Eve was tempted by the snake to put the apple in her mouth. Yeah, that's something there, right? Mm -hmm. I know whenever I'm getting a blowjob, all of a sudden I become religious. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you know, thank God, okay. praise the Lord. Like, I see the light, and I'm coming! Yeah, the post office motto is, it's as old as it is iconic, you know? It's like, whether rain, sleep, or snow, like, if you ever try to mail cash, we'll steal it. Hey, you know, the French women's gymnastics team uh, failed to move forward this, whatever, this past weekend. Despite being like, uh, the favorites to oppose the U.S. team, you know? It's kind of sad. Yeah, it's all over for them. It's like now all they have is their youth, their beauty, and their tight asses. Hey, you guys ever been to a Korean barbecue restaurant? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's kind of unique in that you pay to cook your own meat, right? Mm -hmm. And if you pay a little extra, you can wash your own dishes and take out the trash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went to Mount Baldi this past weekend. You know, I learned that it wasn't always called Mount Baldy, though. Yeah, back when the mountain was more youthful and younger, it was known as Mount Rogaine. <laughs> and one of my friends told me that, uh, he says, when you scratch your head, that's what makes you go bald, you know? I don't think so, though, because my balls are still hairy as hell. Yeah, one of my buddies is a white dude, but uh, he's like super duper white. I think he's like part albino or something. And he's so white when he comes to my house, all my plants start growing in his direction. Yeah, you know, whenever I'm having sex, I never last as long as I'd like to, you know? I'm always like, come on, penis, hang in there. It's always like, nah, screw this. Blah. And you know, I used to go to raging uh, water parks like every summer, you know? But then one summer, I, whatever, I had a fairly traumatic experience happen, so I stopped going. And when I was 16, I was at the Raging Waters. You know, I was waiting on this, uh, these stairs, right? To go on the slide. And I look up, and the girl next to me, she about the same age as me, but her boobs are like right in my face, right? And it's kind of cold and windy, you know, so her nipples are popping out. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I turn, but now this girl here, her face is like right in my crotch, you know? And like, I already got a partial woody going on, right? Cause nipple girl all over here. But now face crotch girl, she like yawns, right? So I'm like, oh my God, you know? All of a sudden, it's like full woody now, right? Like, you know, I almost fucking poked her in the eye and shit. And I was like, oh shit, I gotta get out of here. So I fucking just run up the stairs past everyone. And apparently it's pretty common in Raging Waters because the lifeguard was like, come on, come on, just go, just go. So I got up out of there, I jumped on the slide and I was like, damn, they didn't really need to rename this place. And they should call it Raging Boners. <laughs> what do you call an oyster that, or why didn't the oyster share his food? 
He's shellfish. Uh, you know, there's this sailor, right? And he gets hired on the ship, and uh, he's out, out of sea for about six months. He's talking to his buddy. He's like, hey, man, uh, when are we going back to the port, you know? I'm getting kind of horny out here, right? And he's like, oh, no, we're not going to go back to port for another six months. He's like, what? You know, I can't wait that long. He's like, well, have you tried the barrel? They're like, no, what's that? So he shows him to this room. There's a barrel in there, right, with a hole in it. So I was like, here you go. So he tries it out, right? He starts fucking the barrel. And uh, it works really well, you know? So he's talking to his buddy later. He's like, yeah, man, that barrel is fucking awesome, dude. He's like, I want to use it every day. It's like, well, every day but Sunday, right? It's like, oh, you can't use it on Sunday? It's like, well, you can, but Sunday's your day in the barrel, so. What do you call a guy that can make a business suit real fast? Taylor Swift. And you know, whenever you hear a guy bragging about how big his junk is, you know, it's usually the opposite, right? It's usually really small and stuff. And I was talking to this guy the other day. He was like, oh man, my, my dick is so big. I'm hung like a horse. I was like, Shh, yeah, like a seahorse. Yeah, I think Shaquille O'Neal is the happiest man on earth, you know? He's like, oh, he's so jolly. And like, everyone just loves him, right? You know, I think it's because he's never been bullied before. You know, how are you going to mess with somebody who's so tall that his junk is in your face, right? It's like, hey, Shaquille, give me your fucking lunch money. Never mind. You know that thing going around where uh, if you're a lady and you're alone in the woods, would you rather run into a bear or a strange man? And a lot of women are choosing the bear, right? Uh, I think that's just ignorance of bear knowledge. Yeah, because I've met a little bear alone in the woods once, and he fucked the shit out of me. You know, it's earlier this year, scientists reported for the first time two male humpback whales having sex. Yeah, Warner Brothers already going to make a movie about them. And they're going to call it Humpback Mountain. It's weird how things changed over time, right? Like nowadays, if a guy came up to me and told me he was going to blow my brains out, I wouldn't know whether to run away or pull the pants down. Yeah, I was watching this Bigfoot show the other day, and it struck me is how dedicated these Bigfoot hunters were. And you know, they're so devoted to something that might not even be real. Like comedians in their careers. <laughs> yeah, I've had sex with all different types of women. White, black, Asian, Hispanic. In my opinion, Asian women give the best blowjobs. Yeah. If any of you ladies like to prove me wrong, you can meet me in the bathroom after my set. <laughs> what did the Australian chess player say to the waiter? He said, checkmate. And a couple months ago, North Korea sent over 200 balloons over to South Korea. Yeah, they're loaded with like garbage and excrement. But that statement's not exactly accurate. Because those balloons, they weren't filled with shitty trash. No, they're filled with Dane Cook's jokes. Mm. I'll tell you a story. All right, uh, in the first day of eighth grade, right, there was this huge fight that everyone talks about, you know, to this day. It uh, involved some seventh grader, right, named Viet, some little Vietnamese kid that I had never heard of, and Chago, right? Everyone knew who Chago was. He was like this uh, gangster cholo kid, you know? He had like a shaved head, and uh, the big, the rumor was that his brother was a like, gang leader. Anyway, like, uh, I was scared to death of Chago, you know? And so I spent all seventh grade avoiding this dude. So this is the first day of eighth grade. Anyway, this fight starts. <clears throat> like I said, I didn't see it, but everyone tells me. In the very beginning, like, Viet, he gets in this weird kung fu stance, right? He's like this, right? And then everyone starts laughing, you know, because they think he's fucking around or something. But he's not fucking around, you know? He's like, come on, right? And so Chago's like, all right, motherfucker. And so they go. And then Viet, he starts, he starts doing all these quick little hits and kicks and shit, right? And he starts winning, you know? And so Viet, uh, Chago's got these two buddies, right? And so they jump and they're like, fuck this, right? And then Viet, he just starts fighting all three of them, you know? He's like, bah, bah, bah. And everyone said that. It looked like the three guys were like moving in slow motion and shit. And he's just like, yeah. anyway, Chago's like, fuck this, you know? So he goes to his backpack and he gets these two sharpened pencils, you know? He's like, I'm gonna fucking stab you, right? And Viet, he just starts, he starts kicking the pencils, you know? And he breaks them, he breaks both of them and shit. And then he just starts kicking everyone's like, yeah! And they're like, oh shit! And they all fucking just run away and shit. And everyone's just like all stunned and shit. They're like, what the fuck? Like, wow, you know? And uh, I saw one of those guys the very next morning, and he was like limping around this shit, you know? And after that fight, everyone in my school took martial arts. And after that fight, everyone in my school stopped using pencils. 
Yeah, my dog, she's cute as hell, you know. She's so cute. When other dogs see her, they go, oh my gosh, that dog is so cute. And then they go, oh my gosh, I can talk. Yeah, you know, uh, one of my buddies knows him, dude, so he doesn't eat pork. But he's always trying to pork shame me. He's always like, oh, gross, you eat bacon and sausage. I'm like, man, I'm Korean, right? We eat dog, right? Yeah, I notice a lot of uh, anti-gay cultures are actually quite gay. Like Arab culture, for instance, right? They're notorious for being harsh on their LGBTQ, yet Arab men openly hold hands on the street. You know, how hypocritical is that, right? They're like, don't act gay! La 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 la. And Russians too, you know, they're like world famous for being violent towards their LGBTQ community. Yeah, I saw this Olympics once, and this Russian gymnast, after he finished his jump thing, instead of high-fiving his teammate, he kissed him on the mouth. Yeah, it wasn't just a peck either, they were like really going at it. I'm like, we no tolerate the homosexual in Russia. Come, Vladimir. Mm, 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 mm. Very strange. It seems like men in other cultures enjoy a level of intimacy with each other that we just kind of lack out here. You know, and I have seen a little bit, right? Because I was in the army, you know? You know, the army is very anti-gay. Because it's so gay. <laughs> and you're constantly surrounded by other men, you're like mostly naked or sometimes just totally naked, you know? Like the shower is a perfect example, right? There used to be this one guy, he'd be in the shower every time with a rock hard boner. Yeah, at the time, the policy of uh, gay people in the army was don't ask, don't tell. Nobody had to ask this guy if he was gay or not. I mean, he's all knocking over shampoo bottles and shit. Yeah, it's shocking, you know, you walk in the shower and you're like, what the fuck? That ain't soldier. You know, you're supposed to be hardcore in the army, but not that hard, not that core. Yeah, you know, uh, comedians always tell you two things, right? They always tell you when they just get booked on a show. They always tell you when they just had sex. That's a bit true now, right? Like myself, I haven't been booked on a show in over a month. But I did get laid last week, so whoa! Yeah, my name's Iwan Ung, I'm out here, thank you. Keep it going for Iwan. Hoo-ah!